My name is Bianca Welsh. I am a restaurateur and co-owner now of businesses for over 12 years. Um, and in that time have experienced a, a plethora of, uh, of experiences, but particularly in the mental health space. I'm very fortunate that I get to work alongside my team and on the business I work in and on and I really enjoy getting to know my staff and, and seeing their strengths and weaknesses and being able to professionally develop them. I had an amazing waiter. Uh, this person was a casual, really focused, exceptional at their job, uh, would come in and give me 110%. We began noticing some changes in this particular staff member in their performance uh, on the job. Uh, they were becoming vague and detached. They were becoming inefficient and inaccurate in their roles and responsibilities. We began to notice that the, uh, the behaviour on shift was resulting in, in binging and purging on shift. So they were actually binging on the stock. It was quite confronting to the team uh, around them and their fellow employees became quite upset about the behaviour um, and wanted to know how can we help this person, what can we do. So I was quite nervous about having this conversation with this person. I did not want to make it worse. I didn't want to exacerbate the, the conditions. Um, I also did not want to lose this person from the workplace because despite their performance, they were a valuable team member and I really wanted to do something to help. So if we're to talk about an eating disorder, we're referring to a number of different conditions. And there are some myths that are associated with eating disorders. One of the most common myths is that it's um, a lifestyle choice. And people tend to minimise the seriousness of eating disorders, which can be potentially life-threatening. Bianca described a very specific example where she was seeing particular signs um, and symptoms which she recognised as pertaining to an eating disorder. So for owner operators who are wondering what signs and symptoms to look out for, they don't have to be an expert in each individual mental health condition, but it is important to observe a change in their staff member and for them to think about, has that change been persistent over time and is it having an impact on both their behaviour and their work performance? It's important that they do that in a way that respects the person's choice and their privacy. The help that might be offered um, doesn't need to be specific to the condition, it needs to be specific to the person. And one of the useful things that an owner operator can do is to ask for that dialogue to continue over time. I decided eventually just to have a very broad conversation with them um, and to say, how are you and is everything okay? Um, the conversation went okay. It wasn't ideal. It kind of ended, not abruptly, but without any outcome. And I was very concerned of what was going to happen. And I, I just said, can we, can we speak again soon? Um, and they went, they went off and went home. Fortunately, the next day, I received a really long text message from, from this person to thank me for bringing it to their attention. They were in denial. Um, it was a problem that they'd had earlier in their life. They were going through some stressful things at home and it had reared its head. I can imagine it could be quite scary thinking about how best to support a team member who's having difficulty and you might be worried about saying the wrong thing. So using um, language which is uh, supportive, and, and you, it's okay to admit that you don't know all the answers. And it's okay to say, can you help me find the best way to support you because I'm not sure what to do in this situation. One of the best ways to create a mentally healthy workplace is to take action early. So to take those preventative steps to decrease stigma around mental health in the workplace, to raise awareness, to offer training, so that uh, the team builds an understanding of what it means to be mentally healthy, ideally before um, a serious problem arises. The actions we took to support this employee was to have checking conversations as often as we could and as often as that person was comfortable to do so. To know where they were at and what their capacity was for that day was really important in being able to support this person to continue to work and to feel part of the team and to still feel functioning while they were recovering. 
What's really important if you're concerned about your own relationship with uh, food, uh, diet and exercise is that you go to a reputable source of information and the Butterfly Foundation is one of those really good sources of information. So at butterfly.org.au you can read lots of information about the various different types of eating disorders and also how best to support somebody. But whenever you're in doubt, um, it's important that you go to a, a GP to get more information. And it's also important to remember that as an owner operator, you're not expected to know the answers about these um, particular conditions. We needed to ensure that the team around them had some awareness um, of what that person was going through and it would, that was on a need to know basis, so only if they were working directly with that person and it would potentially affect their shift. The best advice I can offer a, another owner, manager, operator would be to be as understanding as you possibly can and to know that it's not you that needs to fix it. You're not the person that's going to be their psychologist or the doctor, you're, you're the manager. You're just wanting to help guide them into the right pathway to get help. The outcome was really positive. I was very grateful and fortunate that this person wanted to get help and that they were proactive in getting better. All people want is to be heard and to be seen and to be understood. And we can all do that as human beings. We don't need to be the person to have the solution.